Right, fantastic to be here today with Robbie Cannon. Robbie is a two-time Irish amateur champion, top, top player, also on a world's leading strength and conditioning coach. He's worked with a host of tour players, including Shane Lowry. So, fantastic to have you here, yeah, Robbie. Great, great to be back, do a bit of work on the short game. So, we're going to work through some different shots today, but we'll just look towards that back pin to begin with, okay? And uh, you've got your 50. It's a 50 degree. 50 there, yeah. Okay, so your bad one historically, you get that one that just sort of digs in a bit. You tried to dig a bit there. Yeah. Um, it's just inconsistency of contact at times. And I think especially when you're not practicing as much mm -hmm. with work and stuff like that, especially this time of year when like you're not playing a whole lot, mm -hmm. you'd like just to have a little bit more consistency um, mm -hmm. in your technique. Yeah. So, so a few more, okay. So I, I obviously have my bad habits that I tend to creep back to, so... I won't say they've changed too much from the last time I've been here. So a little clean, yeah? Yeah. You what? Yeah, like it'll, 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 it'll pretty much be center face all the time, but it could be a bit heavier, or a bit thin. Yeah. And then obviously the roll is a bit inconsistent. Yeah. So you're having to manipulate that quite a lot to get that yeah. back online, okay? Yeah. All right, just just um, set up the ball. So one of your tenses in the past has been like tipping a bit, like yeah. the right hip almost goes up. Yeah. And it and it heightens this way, and it almost then gets you flaring this elbow out here, yeah. and it the club kind of gets trapped behind you. Yeah. Okay. Left wrist gets a little bit arched this way, so there's not much really kind of rotation. So you get a little bit steep this way, but because you're a good player with great instinct, you then fix it. And you come out this way, you're yeah. almost tipped back yeah. to try and get the loft back on from this kind of position here where you you know where you take it off. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So we need to basically just get you back into that good movement where yeah. we're working on a shallower motion yeah. going back and really getting you rotating, getting the right hip working behind you more rather than rather yeah. than that one there, which I can definitely see coming in there. And you've got so much manipulation to do from there yeah. to get that club back online. And that's where that big pull just came and from. that's where the inconsistency comes from yeah but we can get this no problem right? so, so we need the calibration back today we'll get it there right so you, you set up to the ball yeah basics look quite nice actually i think you've improved those a lot i mean i yeah. can see you kind of going left hand below there as a drill is yeah. that for you to try and level your shoulders off yeah in the past about? i would have been a bit like yes. this which is so we said try and get the shoulders a bit more level soften mm. the elbows yeah Get more relaxed. So you've done a really good job there. I just yeah. say, just just make sure that these triceps, the particularly this right one, is just a little bit more yeah. connected onto your rib cage. Okay. Now, when you go back in the backswing, this is kind of you at the moment. You're going this way. There's not a lot of movement with the right pocket. Yeah. And this is getting in like this. Okay. Okay. A little bit tippy here, and then from there, you can't really rotate from there. The only way you can get it back is to tip back that way. Yeah. And that's where you get your inconsistencies. You get, yeah, definitely if you're thin coming in that way, too shallow. And then somewhere you're going to drive your hands forward and get it stubborn in there as well. So, okay. yeah, set up to the ball. This okay. will be the improvement. Take it back, don't hit it. Now, if you do that, what can you feel there? Can you feel anything different? Yeah, I feel like my shoulders are a little bit more kind of shallower now, not yeah. as deep. And this? My right hip is obviously rotated. Yeah, cool. And we want to feel like the club head's a little bit more outside your hands. Though. Yeah. Okay. More, yeah. So I want the hand path for you to definitely feel like it's coming slightly in and almost following your right hip, but at the same time, want the club head outside your hands. Okay. Okay. And then from there, you're going to find it dead easy then to work back onto the ball without having to drop off it. Yeah. Which is your bad one. Okay. So let's hit a few. I'll kind of help you move the movement for the first few. Here we go. That's it. So we'll hit a few shots. Don't worry about me. You can do your normal shot. Right, how did that feel? Certainly sounded better. Yeah, better strike, better consistency of roll. Do you feel the right side work more? Yeah. It's funny, I have been trying to get that right hip going. Right, here we go. Okay, just jumped on that. Yeah, that's hand. quick, yeah. So much better with yeah. the connection in here again. Yeah. Yeah. So what that's gonna allow you to do in the through swing 
is get you more around the corner. Because you've been here, yeah. you've been going this way and getting really linear through it. And that's why you've been struggling with the strike. Yeah. So we want to feel like your hands are working more in this way. The right side's working more here, as I just said. The club has more in front of you. But then from here, you're able then to work back onto it and feel like you're working onto the ball on top of it with the hands working around the corner rather than rather than that yeah. one. Should I feel like I'm adding a little bit of kind of hinge? Going back? Wrist? Yeah, or just... Yeah, I've, yeah, if you think about it in a moment, your bad one is your left wrist goes this that way. way yeah. So if you feel like you're going to have a little set, yeah, absolutely, that's going to keep the club outside your hands there okay. with width at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Slightly drop back off that one coming through, but uh, again, the right hip's working better. Let's just really focus on back sweep for the first, first section here. Okay, take it back. There. Okay. Okay. So that's this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, very short going back. Let's get some real length going back. You've got to feel like, you've got to feel like this arm, this left arm is traveling further. Okay. You get pretty short at times and then you react. Yeah. We've got to really feel like you're going to really push that arm away, get some real depth and, and width in that back swing. So do it again. So right hip, there. Really feel like you're going wide, yeah? Yeah. Then you've got hands, you've got a time then to release the club. But if we get short, you're going to drag on it and pull. There you go. I mean, how long did that feel going back? Yeah, it felt, felt like a seven iron. <laughs> <laughs> Came off the fuel. Yeah, it's much better. Good. So right. you kind of have to give up a bit of control to gain a bit more control. Totally, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get, you get short. You don't, because you don't rotate, your hands just don't travel far enough. Yeah. So as a good good player and the amount of instinct you've got, you're going to always do that from there. Yeah. But I want you to feel like you're going to be turning, you're going to be extending away. Yes, there's some hinge, but there's width. Yeah. The hands have got to be travelling over here. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to put this against your head, just to try and stop you dropping back, coming down. Okay. So give me plenty of width and stretch back. Yeah, that's a lot better. Is it, you understand you're not moving that way now. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And when you get it like that, it should feel like it's just got a ton more flow to it. Yeah. Right, right hip, left arm, little set, wide. Yeah, much better. Can you feel like you're staying left now? Yeah. There we go. That's pretty much back to your best there. That's about as good as it gets those last few. But I was having to push really hard against your head to make sure you're not okay. going that way. And when I said just off camera, when I saw you warming up on your own over there, what I could see was a lot of this. Yeah. A lot of that going on. Okay. okay. Which again, that's really, we don't want to just train to stay forward because there's a reason you're doing that. Yeah. But now you're here, there's no reason for you to drop off it. Okay. But because you've been doing it for a while, you're still doing it a little bit, so. So right hip behind your right pocket goes back. Get your club outside wide, stay forward. I love how connected these elbows are onto your chest, by the way. Yeah. I'd say that's a big change, isn't it? Because remember, I don't know, maybe two years ago, we had a look at it, you were really, yeah, you were yeah. really wide through it. And now we've got these elbows much closer, so your arc is much narrower here. Yeah. Great right hip movement there. That was that was fantastic. 
It's funny, isn't it? Like we just sort of get, we get sort of wrapped up. You get, you try and control it too much with short game and we just stop moving, okay? So that's the movement there. Come on, if you go push that hip back, yeah? Little diggy. Yeah. But not bad. No. Where do you feel you have your grip pressure? Yeah, it's probably like three or four. Mm -hmm. Does it look more to you? I, I would say that's the first one that's maybe it's flagged it. So if you take it back, you look great over the ball, but just be careful that you don't increase the grip pressure yeah. in transition. Particularly, I think for you, your thumbs squeeze the grip. Okay. Yeah. So when the thumbs squeeze the grip, it creates lag and drag this way. Yeah. So I like to feel like I'm holding it in the fingers at the back. My thumbs might look like they're on the grip, but they're really not. They're just resting. Okay. Because that last one there, you definitely squeezed it a bit more. Okay. So hold it more on your fingers, less than your thumbs. Nice. Good. The thing I like about the last few is they're, they're kind of not grabbing. Like there's a nice kind of consistency mm -hmm. to the roll. Yeah, good. And you were saying you're out in Portugal last week, you struggled out to be Bermuda grass. Yeah, that's it's tricky. Sort of... And obviously when I go to Florida, play with the lads over there, Shane and that, like it's obviously very difficult, especially the weather hasn't been great, December, January, February over there. So Bermuda, wet, soggy Bermuda, like it was in Portugal, Yeah. not great. Yeah, and you can see with your tendency as well, by doing this, Yeah. What's that doing to the just, bounce of the just club? Just kind of dig, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, really tough from there. And you, the more you can get it here, have a little bit of set, a little bit of cup in that wrist, and get the face there. At least you got you got some help there. Yeah, and you, it's going to work through that through those lines so much easier than that than that position you were in. Yeah, nice, Robbie. Good. That was nice. It's good. A little short going back and a little reacting coming down, pulling the handle forward rather than letting it release. Let it travel longer back. Good difference, yeah? That was better. You've got to feel uncomfortably, get in. You've got to feel uncomfortably long going back. Yeah. Right hip behind your left arm travels. Keep the club head just outside your hands. A little bit of cupping in that wrist. Flow the club head from the top. Flow, turn onto it. Yeah, you're getting it now. Getting it now. Yeah, there are the two best ones. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like my full swing. I need to feel like I almost over swing it. backed up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the feel and real thing in golf is crazy, isn't it? I mean, you know, if you watch that back on video, it's not going to look that much different for you. It yeah. feels just mild. Yeah, it probably wasn't as long backswing. Right, take it back. That's it. We'll come through. Nice. A bit more flight to it, right? Yeah. All right, let's pick the those up a few more. We'll do some with 54 next. All right, let's do the same thing. I'm just going to have one more round of those. Let's uh, use 54 degree this time. And you feel more comfortable with this club in your hand, right? Yeah, whatever 54. the... Possibly the, the grind on it. This is a, an S grind. The other one's an F. Uh -huh. I'll... I'd be lying if I s said I knew exactly <laughs> the difference in them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, really, I really like, and uh, the line of this as well is very straight, mm -hmm. which I like. I think the, I think the new ones coming out now are very, very much the same as this. I had to get this kind of altered by the technician, but no, I love this one. Good. 
It seems to stay on the ground more. Yeah. Obviously they're a little bit diggy, but there's a little bit more forgiveness with this club, I think. I like that rehearsal. Do you know that right pocket's working back beautifully now? Really good. Keep it wide though, don't overset, okay? Keep it wide with a hinge. Yeah, we'll drive it. The way the ground conditions are, it's still very winter-esque. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get away with much. Yeah, good. You're moving well. I still think you're getting a little bit, that face is closing down a bit, going back. Okay. So like, your plane's better, you're moving better, it's still getting a little bit shut at times. Okay. Let's try and work on that, okay, so you, you're getting there. So historically, what we worked on the, on the on the past was to try and get that logo, the glove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're getting a bit way. down to the ground. Okay. Okay. So this would be this would be where I want it to be. Okay. More there. Okay. That way. Yeah. You're getting a bit that way at times. Okay. Okay. Feel that? Yeah, a tiny bit thin, but much better. Feel the face? Yeah, felt like it just went straight up the grooves. And I think the easiest way to feel that is without it, just feeling that little bit of knuckle twist. Yeah. It's amazing how you always revert back to your DNA, yeah. isn't it? And that's your moving full swing of it, yeah? Uh, yeah. Well, definitely, yeah, take yeah. away. But then what I do is my forearms keep rolling and it ends up a little bit laid off. Mm -hmm. Whereas at the moment I'm trying to obviously get it in a good spot to kind of P2, but then I almost feel like my forearms are going the other way to get it online to top. Yeah, yeah. So, which is a bit weird. Good there. Good. A lot better with the wrist. So I like that way. You've hit that, what, two inches before the ball? Yeah. But it's starting to slide better now. And like I say, this time of the year, you cannot get too too kind of down and diggy with it. It's just going to tell you, isn't it? I think the the environment where you play a lot of your golf as well. Obviously, I play most of my golf in the links, and like you're hitting a lot of kind of them kind of diggy shots, aren't you? Totally. You're, I think I think players totally become a byproduct of the environment they're in, like where you grow up playing golf, what sort of shots you've been having to play. And just with my PhD, like the research I'm doing, like all the guys that have been really successful have came from short parkland mm. courses. It's quite interesting, actually. We've, we've had that conversation yeah. before. And, and, um, and their short games are incredible. Yeah. Like you see Shane and Rory's short games. Obviously, I'm lucky to play with these guys from time to time. And like even a shot, like they, they make the simple shots look so good, like just so easy. Like mm. they're chipping them in, stone dead. Um, and then like the really difficult shots as well, they make them look so easy. Like they're just, it's just flawless. And pe I, don't, <laughs> I don't think people realize how good it is. No. But obviously that's came from growing up in a-, a So they grew up in soft environments where it wasn't, wasn't too linksy. Yeah, bit of and like the, the greens were kind of like upturned saucers and stuff. So th there was a lot of flop shots. Like I think almost every good short game player that I see or talk to, like they, they want to land it on the green first. Yeah. Whereas if you're playing Lynx course, like I'm playing Baltre, Royal Dublin, like you're sometimes you're using you the ground a lot more, aren't you? Yeah, like you might from here, you're you're almost looking. Okay, can I hit this? Like yeah. a little kind of bump and run or stuff like that. So that kind of gets you to a good level, but then when you get to tall, tall yeah. level with tuck pins, yeah, and you're playing out of all these different types of grasses. Do you think there's a big there's a big separation between the players that are put on links course and it's the incredible the control yeah. that Shane has with his pitching and his chipping is just and his bunker play as well, like phenomenal. Uh, especially when you go to the likes of the Bears Club and the Grove, where it's like really firm yeah. and fast, where yeah. you, you, you literally have to land it on a sixpence. Yeah. And the right and, flight, the right spin. Yeah, and stop it. And that's where, like, I, really, my short game, that's where it really shows up over there. Mm. Uh, even like on a quite simple shot, you just you don't have the control to land it and control the spin and, and roll out. Yeah. 
And maybe I'm being a bit hard, hard on myself because you're playing with obviously the best players in the world and you see how good they are. And then you hit one to, like you hit a pretty good chip to six feet and you just feel like, <laughs> like you're a 30 handicapper. <laughs> but that's why. But I think it's interesting for people watching is like how, how good that level is. And, you know, you got to the very, very top of amateur golf. I mean, the very top, you know, you yeah. in the Irish amateur twice. Yeah. I mean, amazing. You grew up playing with Roy. And, and, and yeah, I, and I think that kind of helped me in my decision. People ask me that all the time. Why didn't you turn pro? But like I grew up playing with Rory and Shane. And like after five holes of playing with Rory for the first time, I said he's going to be a superstar. The next yeah. year I played with Shane, the same tournament after nine holes. It's this guy's yeah. superstar. You know, you yeah. just knew at such a young age, they were just a different level. So it's interesting. If you hadn't have played with those guys, you probably would have turned pro. You probably and do you ever think well you know how, how would it have worked out or yeah know? like i went to tour school once and i missed the first stage by a shot and i didn't put well that week but like that was the year where i had my best ball striking and the guy is doing my stats says you got to go because your stats are european tour standard yeah so i went and i played well but my putting just wasn't as just had a bad week on the greens um now who knows if you had got a card you might have gave it a go but like i don't regret it because i just knew i just wasn't at the level and you see some guys now that are really talented and like great players, like some of the guys that I train, they're like on kind of mini tours, challenge tours, stuff like that. And they're so good, but they're, they're just not making the breakthrough. It's so mm -hmm. difficult. And then mentally it gets difficult for them, like how many years they keep going. And um, sometimes they just need a break. Mm -hmm. And like some of the interviews I've done with guys, like it's just having somewhere to play, mm -hmm. having a, a schedule where you know you're going to play 20 events, 25 events, and you then you can test and plan yourself. And, yeah. yeah. But no, like, it's so, like in Ireland, especially, people are so hard on our, on our stars. It's just a little bit of it. I don't know if it's like that in England as well, but like some of our greatest players, like some of the achievements that they've had, the, the lads don't get the, the recognition for what, how good they are. Yeah, you know, I find that just, incredible. Just I, mean, so I, mean, I mean, guys like Harrington, I mean, what an unbelievable career he's had. Ah, incredible. You talk about short games. <laughs> yeah, he's up there, isn't he? Yeah. Like I, I, you talk about Shane, short game, like I think Shane probably the only p person you might get a little bit of kind of short game advice on. Obviously, his coach, Neil, does a lot of great work with him. But like I know when Shane and Porig are playing short game games, like Shane picks up a little couple of teams yeah, yeah, off yeah. Porig and stuff, you know. Yeah. So. And Shane uses his 58 almost all the time, is that right? Yeah, but I think he could use a 7 iron and still chip. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you talk about good short game players, it rubs yeah. off. It's much better. Look at that divot there. Right, what are you feeling now then? Just so you can put it in your own language. What so, are you? face obviously feels more open, but probably just square. I feel like I'm longer in turn my, my backswing, my right hip. And I feel like I'm less draggy with the handle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's coming from simply the position you're in at the top of the backswing. But also getting sufficient length allows the time for this busted grip to release back up this way. Yeah. And I think you need to have awareness. Go there again. I think you need to have awareness of where this that, goes. Yes, yeah, so that wasn't moving at all, really. It wasn't moving. It was getting there. Yeah. So for a good play, you're always going to do that and then back off. Yeah. That's what you were doing. Which I'm doing right. on my full swing as well. Yeah, face tons better going back. You just need reminding on on rhythm from time to time, don't you? Yeah. Should we go down in the runoff area? Yeah. Get some, some tight lies. Right, so a little bit less green to work with. I want to see one of these nice sort of floating, higher spinning shots now. Lies are a little bit tight. Be a good test. God, that's better than it used to be, isn't it? Remember how <laughs> short your backswing used to get? Is that what you're focused on? Trying to get really long? Okay? Yeah, just working on time. that rhythm now and getting that face open. You can definitely move that ball position forward a good inch, inch and a half or so. It was almost back of centre there. Yeah, that's better. Back so, it off a bit. So exactly. So so you got that back well. That yeah. was good. Your hips have driven, and your upper body's backed off. Yeah. Feel that straight away. What I want you to feel here. Yeah. You get it. You think your backswing's fantastic, by the way. Absolutely brilliant. 
you've got it there, you've got a cup in, you've got a great length. Yeah. It's probably 50% longer than you used to do you know, when yeah. you're playing the shot. Yeah. Right? So that's fantastic. From there, you want to be feeling like the club is working out in front earlier this way. Okay. okay. Out in front. And as it's releasing, you don't want to be feeling like you're almost going straight around the corner here. Like okay. I really want to work. Feels like your right arm is working across your chest, across your stomach through the ball. So you're coming around it. I don't want you to drive and go under. You're releasing around that front side. So go to the top of the swing. Set. So your bad one then is you went this way. Yeah. All right. I want you to feel like you're going to release it that way. That's it. And then around and finishing the holster a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just a little bit that way. Okay. Does that feel more in front? Yeah. Fraction heavy. I mean, you wouldn't be hitting these heavy really, but obviously, the this time of year, it's going to tell you. Yeah, ground you. is so bad, yeah. Yeah. That's so it, you go to the top. So you're working. This is your bad one. Yeah. You want to go this way. That way. Round, 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 round. Keep going. Finish round here. That's it, that's the feel. Does that feel more left? That was better. Well, it's gonna be far, but it's better. Mm -hmm. I like exaggeration there. Pretty good. Right, so as you're making that move, I think about this left hand. I want this left hand to go this way. Right, so as you're going through, you're twisting the knuckles this way. Okay. You're going a bit this way. Okay. So you're going left, but you're actually going this way. I want you to feel like you're going to go here. Okay. Add a bit of loft. Yes. So That's why it's twist. good to practice with a 54. Absolutely agree. It forces you to do it, doesn't it? Right, here we go. That. There. Release. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yep. Backed up on that one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Stayed forward a lot more there. That was better. It was a really crap lie. Yeah, if you look at this on the video now, look at this release point, that's perfect. Perfect release two. Okay, so it's coming in there, perfect. Now, you can see, see what I mean, like you get a little bit underneath it, like I'd want you to be much more around the corner at this point. You can still go a lot more left after the ball. Yeah. Right, so I love the release, you're just a little bit this way. So how do we do that then? So you're gonna go left a lot more. So so is it more like with the shoulders going? No, I do it a bit later than that. I won't go too early. Let me show you. So, so you're releasing it well there. It's going this way, still backing off a bit here. Yeah. You want to be feeling like you're releasing it, but just coming into the ball, this last sort of foot or toe into the ball, you want to be feeling like you're working right around here. Yeah. Okay. Literally right around the corner. Yeah, that's the most important thing to you. Like you, you can't exaggerate this enough. So it's releasing. Look how much goes round. Okay, and in the hole. There we go. Show off. And in the holster. All right. So you've just got to be a little bit more sort but, of committed so, with that move. So like the shoulder is obviously going underneath then. So should I feel like the shoulder higher. is almost... It's higher. Almost going yeah, that exactly. way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
but it, you understand it's like a lightning and you're releasing it you have that dead period where let the club release yeah then it's round okay Yeah, there you go. There you go. And when we get the right club in your hand, which is, you know, this 54 is a bit strong, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to feel really easy. Okay. Do you want to do that? Let's grab the, uh, is it 58 you carry? Bent to a 59. Which is quite high bounce, this, isn't it? Yeah, I have a couple of different ones. I have one that's like a K grind that doesn't have much either. It's like six degrees. Right, this should feel much easier. Having practiced with a 54, it's a great drill. I like whenever you're trying to find loft and trying to get away from faults, particularly for you where you've been getting basically getting the face closed, practice with a strong loft. But now we're getting the hang of it. Let's now just use a weaker loft. Same movement. I thought that movement was good there. So you've hit it and you've moved a lot more around the corner. Nice. Like how, how narrow can you get it? It's like, Okay. Yeah. Really? Good. Do, 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 do. Find some grass. Yeah, there's, there's actually not that many good lies left. Yeah, I like that move. I like that move. And it's almost like this time, right? As you're watching the ball go through the air, I want you still turning. Okay. Right? So you're watching the ball and you're still moving. Don't forget the backswing. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. So it doesn't need to be a rush to get there, does it? That's no. what I'm saying. You, you've got to you let the club fall first. And you, from the position you're in now, you can do that at the top. Let it fall. But coming into the ball, you need to be committed with the move. It doesn't need to be particularly quick, but it's a committed move. Don't stop moving left. So hitting that like four inches behind mm -hmm. it. What's, what? You're still dropping off that, so you've still got to keep it more. I'll go a little wider. See if you can flare that left foot out a little bit more on that left side and just just keep that left foot a little bit more planted. You're not dropping off that side. That's yeah. the opposite. Yeah. I could feel that in my legs moving. Mm -hmm. A few inches behind it as well. I think that, that's the K grind you got there, isn't it? This is, yeah, this is a lot of bounce on this yeah. one. I wouldn't say this is perfect for these conditions. Yeah, as I said, I've got a six degree one as, as yeah. well. This one's probably good for like wedge distance wedges and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was better. That, you just stayed forward there. Yeah, just better transition, wasn't it? But that was a good shot, and you can still see with the ground conditions, there's a big divot there. So you look at this on the video, you can just see you didn't back off this whatsoever. You've released it, as we talked about. You're moving, 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 and you've stayed you there. Yeah. That's a really good one, okay? I should have put that in the holster. You could have done, you just didn't. <laughs> no, you did, actually. You slid it down, look, but it's a little bit wide. Okay. I just have to get the technique a little bit better before I start adding that in. The showboating. So. There we go. 
join the holster club. <laughs> Right, so we're going to play some different shots down here. We're going to do, let's do a release one, landing it on top and running it down. Yep. And then we're going to see if we can increase the spin and do like a mini version of a release two, landing it over the slope and spinning it. Okay, so think about the keys we did initially on this shot. Good, so that's a low spinning shot. So it's landing and chasing out. Yeah. Right. Quite comfortable with that now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. So this will be the one perhaps you're least comfortable where you want to throw it and control it a little bit more. So it's basically what we were just doing down there, but this is like a mini version of a release too. We're using a 54, so it's going to come out lower. You're going wider, there's definitely less wrist hinge, but you're still letting the club release at the bottom. Yeah. This is a shorter swing, okay? So you'll see it's, the flight's going to be quite low, but we should be able to load the spin. Keep it wide, let it slide at the bottom. And now you can see the picks on the ball just really spinning there, okay? Yeah. Be a little bit careful you don't shut that face down again, though, going back. There. You don't need to open the back there, okay? Not there, though, yeah? Yeah. Keep it wide. Wide to slide it. Wide. Slide. A little bit more release from transition, okay? And you come back down, see like it's just going to release a little earlier. There's a bit of a drag in that one. That's it. Super relaxed, particularly the thumb pressure. Nice. Wow, what a difference. Was that grip pressure? What did you change I there? Think, I think the it's just a better lie. Better lie, <laughs> yeah. It's amazing though when you're playing, how how much and it, sh it shouldn't really affect your thinking so much, but like especially this time of year, forget like a lie. It's really tight, soft. Yeah. Well, I think mentally, what happens when the ball starts sitting down, the, it's human nature to start saying, "Well, I'm going to get that club into the ball." Yeah. Because that that's going to give you a strike, right? And that's kind of what you've got to do. Yeah. When it's sitting up a bit more, with effectively that lighter grip, you start letting the club release more. Obviously, you can start yeah. using the bounce under the ball. So. All about assessing that line, just making that little adaption. But um, that lies fine. Come on, let's get the release. Nice. Perfect. Very good. Yeah, nice. Good, now run one down, let's lower the spin. A little bit more forward, a little bit less release, keep the lean edge down for lower. Get it going forward. It's so important to be able to change the spin of the ball. Yeah. Then you can manage different slopes. Manage the ground conditions. Even that was there. So a little bit behind it, but yeah, got away with it. Right, let's go to the tall pin down the end there. Okay, now so down there. Okay. The back pin. What sort of shot would you play here with this with this club? So this one here. No, we're going to go to the furthest one. Okay. Because it, it kind of goes down, then it goes up, right, and it? then it yeah. goes down. Yeah, I'd probably play like a little dry type. Drawy one, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what I'd do. Yeah. So I'd aim a little bit right. And then I almost just feel like I'm closing that's a the great face shot. slightly. Yeah, that's a great but shot. But I think this is a shot I'd be good at, obviously, product of your environment. Yeah. You have this shot a lot in the links. Mm -hmm. Like all our tournaments in amateur golf are, are Lynx golf. So if you don't have this shot in your and you're managing the slope here. I mean, I think a lot of players here would, good players who don't quite get understand short games, they play a nice shot, but it would just check up. Yeah. And what, what that little toe turn at the bottom. So what you're doing there is you're aiming a tiny bit to the right. The plane starts to come a little on the inside. You come in from here, but you're just letting it wipe over this way through the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So you get check on the first and second bounce. Then if you watch that carefully, it ran out. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to check into that slope. Yeah. Yeah. 
And also, whilst tight blink slides, because you're working the toe in, you've got a better chance of getting a strike. Great. Bit of check and then runs out. Tiny bit more speed. There you go. Almost drew that a bit more there, yeah? Yeah, slightly longer backswing. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you got that shot. I like it. Oh, this pin on the left here, then this one here into the slope. First one. What are you thinking there? Because this is an interesting one as well. It down and back up. So you've got to think about the last third of the of the shot here. Is it going to be still releasing up the hill, right? So you've got to manage this. So it's not a release two, is it? No, similar type of shot. Release one. Again, a little bit of draw because it's the left or right slope. Managed it really well. Managed it really well. Good. That was nipped and then. And that was as your mind saw it? Yeah. Perfect. Good. What about this one here where we're straight down the hill, not much green to work with. Okay, obviously you're going to get quicker in the summer, but it's still pretty quick now. Okay, lie. Straight down the hill. Yeah. Very easy for this ball to get away from you. What are you thinking here? So I think you need to get a good strike, don't you? First couple of, first bounce needs to have a bit of check on it. Obviously picking your spot. I think Good. the, I think okay. the most important thing about this shot is you don't jerk at it like you almost let the club head mm -hmm. fall onto the ball, don't you? Like that. That's good. And then the other one you can, when it's when it's quicker, is where you actually use the toe a little bit. So you know when you actually put the handle a little bit higher and you aim out the toe, almost you could do a putting grip as well. And it's but like a putt chip, so you can do the same thing and you get a little bit more spin on that first bounce. Yeah. You see, so it pops up. Softer, so yeah. Hit, hitting it there, yeah? So you play that one. But heighten the handle, toe down, strike it out the toe, and you'll see it spin up a little bit more. See, so it just holds the slope. Little shot. And you feel like you could exit left a bit more at this one, don't you? Mm -hmm. A little it's behind it, but yeah, really but good it's, shot. it's never getting away from you, is it? No. Whereas you're trying to sometimes hit that, hit that out the middle of the face. Sometimes the sweet spot can just push it and it gets away from you. Really simple little shot, that little pot chip. So important to have all these shots, you know, have a good range, good arsenal of shots. Nice. Right, should we get in the sand? Yeah. So just just to explain what we've done in the past then, what, what your feels are, because you used to get quite open, you sort of wiped across it a bit. Yeah. And the ball would almost come like diagonally up and hit it quite high toe area. Yeah, so like, like I, we can write. I think my setup was pretty good. Um, I think the big thing that first I was concerned about my bunker play was the first session with you. I, I felt like I was too long, but you said that was actually a strength. Yeah. But I think what was happening was the face was coming in open. Yeah. And just wasn't you, getting. You wouldn't enough, get any purchase on it, were you? Wasn't getting enough purchase. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. But I feel when my bunker play is good, a little bit like 
the short game shots I was hitting there that I release it a bit more and that the toe is almost beating the heel to yeah. the ball. I was just a bit backed See, up. Yeah, I, I think you look better when you're almost trying to draw your bunker shot. Yeah. So let's have a look here. So, right, good. Pelvis has got a little bit neutral. Let's just stick the pelvis forward a couple of. That's it. That's better. Then you got a bit more ground. Yeah, that's better. That's the draw feel. That's the draw feel. Yeah, that had a little bit. I of think just to counter your tendency of tipping back, you've got to stick that pelvis forward. Yeah. You know, you've got to get more that way. And really feel like from your hip to your knee, you are really strong. I do that. My full swing is that my setup is like here. Yeah. And I back, back out of my yeah. full swing. That's it. Forward there. Good. So you want I've to really actually started. To, I used to do this in my full swing where I actually, as a preset, I used to do that. Literally just shove it there, yeah. And then I stopped. Mm -hmm. But I've, con I've gone back to it now recently and... Yeah. It's definitely helping. But you feel pressure here. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel right like the foot. Knee over that the foot. knee is going the same angle as the foot. Fantastic. Right. So take your back swing. I think that's, yeah, how are you are there. But yeah, your feel is, you see, if you come down this way, like that face is slanted, oh, yeah. I want you to feel like your toe is catching up that way. Yeah. And yeah, you're working the sand almost in a draw fashion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I touched the sand there before I took it back. I don't want any YouTube viewer now saying, oh, you cheated there. <laughs> <laughs> Two shot penalty. <laughs> Good. So if you look at where your face angle is, right, it's there. When yeah. you strike it, you want to be feeling you're matching that back to that line, okay? Okay. That's really good. That was nice. Beautiful. You can always tell a good bunker shot when it's like, it's flying through the air in like slow motion. Yeah. It's just a spin that gives it that look. And I can just catch it in one hand. Sand is quite nice. Yeah, good here. And uh, you know, typically, is there any type of sand you would struggle more of? Like if there's more sand or less sand? Oh, I, I think my bunker play is pretty good. Um, because the keys having versatility, you've got to be able to adapt to all lines, haven't you? Yeah. I guess when I'm comparing myself to the to the lads, they're so good at like the short range ones. Yeah. And I feel when my bunker play is on point, when I'm releasing it correctly, I can get them properly. But when I'm, I know I'm a little bit off and I'm struggling with them ones. So you're talking about when the, when the pins maybe three on. Yeah. And, and, and they can flop it up and just, and just stop it. And it just it. stops, yeah. yeah. But as I said, I, I have that shot where my technique is is good. Yeah, good. That's nice. You look like you're keeping that right arm a lot closer to your right side now. Okay. You know, when, you know in the past, you've kind of gone that way. Yeah. Okay. This is for you. I'd really feel like this is like glued on. So you're here. Almost feels like you're coming from the inside as you then release the face this way rather than working across too much. Yeah. Okay. So it's connected. Do you, do you feel like sometimes, I know this is a hot topic in golf instruction. So when people are obviously trying to keep that right elbow pretty close in, in the full swing and short game, do you feel that can make the swing like a bit narrow? What, going back? Going back. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a feel and real thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're trying to keep that in there, it's going to get you now. I want you to feel like your, your right side is rotating, yeah. like you're getting real width. Eventually, of course, it's yeah, going to come out. There, yeah. right? but certainly coming down, you want to feel like your right arm and, and rib cage are connected. See, I think you could have drawn that. That looks a little over the top to me, right? Yeah. Just feel like you're going to draw Still it. Still a, a good more. shot, but yeah. yeah. Like if I put a line here, line there, right? I want you're going to feel like you're coming in from here. Okay. That's 
lost it. Yeah, that had that lovely. I think you look much better doing that. Yeah, nearly in. The sand's working forward, the divot's much more in line. Also, you're controlling the depth of the divot. Yeah. Very well when you do that. It's like the same. Which is key when you play Lynx Golf, obviously, yeah. the sand is obviously, especially if it rains, it can be, it can be different, difficult to control it. Yeah, best today. That is absolutely top draw. So you can still draw it and it can still stop. Yes. That looked like just just had that slight draw, but it was hanging at the same time. And they're just stopping dead, yeah? Yeah. Pebbles feel strong? Yeah. Right arm connects, little draw. Actually got a little short, but still fine. Yeah, but like the chipping and the pitching, it's it's that transition. If that's smooth, it's generally a pretty good shot. Yeah. That one there, I know I got away with it. It was probably a little bit quick. You see, see before when your face was wide open, you were like glancing across it. You had to hit it, your bunk shots really, really hard. Yeah. Right, because you had, because you, there was no way in which you were being able to get it there. Um, at a, at a normal pace, whereas now, because you're delivering the right dynamics into the ball, you're so much smoother. That's going to allow you to control distance much, much better. Yeah, good. Right, should we go for this pin? This is a short-sided one, and it's yeah. downhill. They moved the pins today, and that is a real test. Right, so let's have a look. Same setup, I'd probably put the ball a little bit more forward. Maybe slightly wider stance. Probably a longer backswing. Played it well, to be fair, that was good. Yeah, maybe could have had a bit more spin. Yeah. You played that well. I quite like your follows through there, one more. Not enough spin on it. Okay, listen, I, I like that. I think what we can do there though is narrow the narrow the arc through the ball a lot more. So what I would be doing here, I'd be going down the grip a little bit more than you. Yeah. And I'd be getting lower. Okay, like really get my hands down between my knees, a little bit wider in the stance, and I'd be not too fussed about getting so much length as you get. I'd be really working on getting the club travelling up releasing it so my hands are really only traveling there in this little box here okay so you can nip it a little bit more so down nice and low hinge it and play it more that way okay see it's much more narrow through it let's try again like that there you go okay you see that yeah lower Down the grip, down. Open the face. More, more you uh, lower the handle, the more you've got to open the face. Because that looks really open, but Lofty's is actually still looking at the flag. Yeah. Keep the pelvis forward. I said limit it here. Yeah, your hands aren't really going to pass your left leg here. Yeah. Right, I did. Hit the base of the bunker that. Yeah, good strike. Down real low. Pelvis forward a bit more. Let the club overtake the hands. Hands are gonna stay real narrow. That's a shot. That's a lot more spin. Yeah. See, so the nature of just setting up down here is gonna make you go this way. Tons more spin. Yeah? Yeah. 
I think you can hit it a bit harder. Can you feel that? So, yeah. So you're passing a lot more energy from the grip down into the club head then. If anything as well, you could just get like we talked about earlier, let do a little bit of twist yeah. this way. Keep a bit more loft on. It's loaded with spin. Still need to get more loft. Staying on the face through the ball. Okay, let's go for that feel. Bit tight in the grip there actually. Just relax it a bit. There we go, so it's more there. Much better left wrist. You feel it go that way? Yeah, again I just think the rhythm was better, wasn't it? Yeah. Sure. How's that feel getting that low? Yeah, a little like bit it. awkward, but yeah. changes the release, doesn't it? Yeah. Speed? Almost. Just a bit more speed. One more. Yeah, quality rolling. Well done. Nice shot. Need a bit of leg strength to be able to stay. Yeah. Stable and low with that one, don't you? Yeah, you've got that. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so let's, let's play some out of the rough. So let's see how you manage this one, which looks on the face of it quite an easy shot. It's sitting right up on top, but it is actually fraught with danger. And I see a lot of people mess these up. So let me watch you play. I'm not give you any clues. I'll watch you play it. Yeah. Okay. To the front pin, so not much green to work with, but it's sitting up. Yeah. This is what you might get when you're playing abroad a bit more, like yeah, which sits on top of the, of the Buna grass sometimes. So you've gone for which club? 68, well, it's a 59. Yeah. You're just gonna troll pretty much all the way there, aren't you? Yep. Okay, right, a little bit diggy. I would be playing that a bit differently. I'd be playing that, I'd actually aim a little to the right with the face maybe a yard to the right. And I'd be coming in round me a little bit more so it's shallow. And I'm just like trying to hit a little high draw. Okay. To make sure I'm shallow in it. Okay, so it's very easy to go straight underneath these. So it's aiming right and draw it. See? Yeah. So it's never going to get caught. I mean, I hit that little heavy devil because it still worked through. Yeah. So I feel like it's more of like a, when it's sitting up on top, feel like you're drawing the ball. Yeah. When it's sitting down, feel like you're going to fade it. Yeah, like you'd get away with that in the summer because it yeah. just. Exactly. Works. But it's going to give way at the moment. So I'm a little to the right. We'll see a little draw pattern in that. Sitting up. Yeah. Aim right, little draw. So release two, but you're letting the toe turn over. Nice. It's far, when you're when you're working the face this way, 
as well as far less chance of letting that thing ride up the face. Yeah. You know, when you're coming in square, it's very easy for it to pop up this way. Yeah, feel that. Put the ball further forward now, though. That's it. So slightly inside, turn the toe over. See, I love that. I love that. Yeah. For me, that's just so repeatable as well. That's one for Bermuda as well, yes. if you're... Yeah. Florida or top. Portugal. So a little shot, ball forward, release it, but release the toe at the same time. So that went a little underneath that. Yeah. Yeah? So you can wrap it over more. Now don't be afraid to aim, almost aim two yards right, so you can actually physically draw it back. So you can see, move it, move it in, in its flight. I mean, that's absolutely perfect. Yeah. And if it's sitting down, let's say we've got this sort of line out. So it's just sitting down, a bit awkward, a little bit of a cushion behind it. You don't want to be doing that. It's going to be cause a problem being too shallow. So you want to go steep. So this is where you go the other way. I go a little bit more left. I'd open the face. And then from there, you can then start to put the, the heel in a little bit more. Yeah and go more that way, so it's more down and left, yeah? So you're looking at the line, you're just looking at how you change that angle of attack. So, so open up. So I'm just feeling like I'm working left here and the heel is really beating the toe. It's um, obviously just dug straight in there. Yeah. Feel like, right, you weren't too far away with that. Just feel like you're going to keep moving as well. Yeah. Like really move past the ball. More speed. So sitting down. Set, so I'm left, out and across. Heel's going to win the race here. Little fade, you feel it? There you go. It's a great shot. Get in. So where the divot's going? Just left, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you can think about whether you're drawing or fading, it's worth lots to you. Okay. Just look at the lie, adapt. Do you want to? Do you need shallow ingredients? Do you need steeper ingredients? How do you need that face to work through the rough? Try it again. Again, just need a bit more speed. Mm -hmm. It's so a bit fun. more commitment to it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I hit, I hit that pretty hard. I've got the chest speed still in there. Obviously, when it's firm underneath, you don't need as much speed, right? That's fantastic. Can you feel that little yeah. fade bias on it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, then go back to a draw now. Just go between them. There we go, sitting right up on top, really awkward. Aim right, turn it over. There you go. Never ever go into the face, is it? No. That's cool. So in terms of your um, strength and conditioning then, so yeah. what got you into that and you know, how's that developed over the years? Yeah, I was doing something completely different. I had a, a different business that I was doing and I remember strength and conditioning, kind of golf fitness. It was actually Paddy that really brought it to, I know people were talking about Tiger, mm. but I think Paddy winning his majors, mm. Uh, Park Harrington, uh, 2000 and 2008, wasn't it? So Seven and eight, yeah. that kind of, he was doing a bit with TPI and stuff and that kind of brought it more to my attention. And I remember I went for a screening with a PGA pro in Dublin, a guy called John Kelly, a uh, good friend of mine, a uh, great player, but he was probably one of the only guys that was, was kind of assessing mm. people, but mm. he wasn't really doing much of the fitness side. He was just assessing. Okay. But I went. You know your limitations and. Yeah, yeah so I, I I was going to the gym. I loved going to the gym, yeah. but I was working the beaches. Like I looked good <laughs> with the top off, but I wasn't necessarily yeah. Getting golf functional for my yeah. golf. Yeah. So I went to him for an assessment, and he basically said, "You can't turn your your body. Your your glutes are weak." And I'm like, "I'm weak. I'm like squatting and mm. really heavy and mm. stuff like that." But I, I think that the game changer for me was up until that time when I when I was making a, a backswing, I couldn't straighten my left arm. And I just thought it was a technical thing. But 
John said you had no thoracic, you know, rib cage rotation. I only had like about 25 degrees of rib cage mm -hmm. rotation. Like within two weeks of me doing three or four stretches daily basis of improving that, I went back. All of a sudden, left arm straightens. Wow. I've got a full backswing, not by changing anything technically. It was just from giving myself more rotation in, in the rib cage. And that was like a little bit of a light bulb moment. And that summer I went on, I won the South of Ireland, got on the Irish team for the first time. I just had a really consistent mm. season just from working. The on, really specific exercises that yeah. were targeting the exact area exactly. that was holding you yeah, back. Exactly. So that's why like generic programs are fine for, for, for people. But if you're really serious, like you should be getting an assessment uh, of somebody who knows what, what they're doing, who's got a degree, a master's degree. And sometimes assessments get um a bad rep but i think a lot of the studies out there and assessments are done with golfers they're done with like elite golfers mm -hmm. and elite golfers generally are pretty good physically good shape, generally, but yeah. like i know myself when i look at the everyday golfer and um, the every like the the high mid handicap golfer like physically they're not that good they can't move their rib cage yeah they might have been sat at the desk all, yeah you know, they can't the move their yeah. hips they've got yeah. no rotation in their hips and when you give them some exercises, when you do that assessment on them, I think it's very powerful. And then they get the results from the exercises that they do two weeks, three weeks, yeah. and all of a sudden my golf game is being transformed. So how quickly do you think, so, you know, if people are watching, they haven't got much time, maybe they've got 15 minutes a day. Yeah. If you've got 15 minutes a day and you know what you need to do, how long do you think it takes to actually notice a difference and actually feel like you can uh, well, spend I'll give you an example. Like the reason why I'm in coaching, like I love helping people little bit like yourself so i had a guy come in yesterday who's been cr like first time chronically in pain for 10 years he was a hurler had a an impact injury on his shoulder and he, he says he wants to be an athletic golfer but every time he goes to the gym he breaks down he has reoccurrences and he wants to know why so i assessed him and he's got he, he can't turn his rib so he's basically here and yeah. he's a right-handed golfer he's got more range this way he can't lift his hands up over his head yeah, you know, yeah, he can't do that. Yeah, so he says uh, my coach has sent me into you because my backswing is is around here. Yeah, well, it's gonna go there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But like, if he's here, yeah. So if I put if I go into my golf posture and then I I make a turn, it's just yeah. gonna go in here, isn't mm -hmm. it? So we realized that straight away. Within like twenty minutes, I got him up here. And what's gonna happen then? So if you're here, I go into my fun, hinge. Yeah turn you know he's going to get higher yeah so the physical does affect the technical in in that kind of yeah. specific case um but like i think for his health as well like if he can't put his hands up over his head when he gets a bit older if he's trying to get a cup out of the, the cupboard yeah, just in general life yeah yeah it's just general life it's longevity of life and longevity of playing golf i like high performance is great and i work with a lot of high performance athletes pj tour but like I love helping people like him mm. that's actually going to help his golf, but mm. also it's going to give him a healthier life mm. and that he can go to the gym. So it's like it's building a house. He's going to have some foundation exercises now that he's going to do. Yeah. But he has to build up like he wants to get into the gym and get stronger, but he has to build up to that. If I give him like a, if I put a, a bar on his back with his shoulder yeah. mobility, himself, yeah. and that's the kind of stuff yeah. that you, that people need to be assessed and then educated but like on the other side if somebody comes in and i assess them and i know they're they're perfect i will start going strength and power because mm -hmm. you think, can build on it yeah and i think a lot of the research in golf is done on that type of person mm -hmm. like high high level golfer uh, i think there needs to be a bit more research on kind of handicapped golfers and like i done a study there a few years ago on 40 um high handicapped golfers and they had no rotation and we gave them a series of five, six exercises. They came back six month, uh, six weeks later, and their club head speed went through the roof. Yeah, I mean that's a good point. You know, you've got to make sure it's specific for, for the player. So let, let's play a few more shots over here. Okay, I found a nice shot here. Quick downhill. Let's see how you manage this one. What club you got there? Fifty four. Again, try that draw release. Yeah. Nice little bit of check, feed it down. Good stuff, one more. See a little bit more flight this time. Yeah, nice. 
So Robbie, in terms of um, you know people being able to get in your diary and see you, you know how does that work? I know you know you're obviously really really busy um, yeah. and uh, hugely in demand, but um, are there any options that people have? Yeah, like I work with people all over the world from the United States to Australia. Do a lot of online assessments and uh, I've got a lot of clients all over the world and yeah basically they just send me an email try and get them in the in the calendar yeah try and do a video call like when we did that time when my, my hip was really bad last summer yeah yeah and we got that sorted and uh basically i i can see basically how somebody it's not ideal but it works really well and a lot of clients all over the world have, have uh got in contact so, and they get a program then after yeah. i have a look so you are you, are you on you're on, it's a live appointment with them yeah 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 and you're asking them to make different moves yeah, I just like you can I, I, I can see, I, they'll, they'll probably do like series of exercises. I can see what they can do. We have a bit of a chat. What are you currently doing? Um, like most of the time when people are having a bit of bother, they are, it's either the biomechanics of their golf swing or something they're doing in the gym, mm -hmm. or there could be an underlying issue. So having a conversation about that, yeah. finding out, trying to get to the root of the problem. Because uh, every size, like every, everyone, everyone is different. Like it's not one size fits all. So. Yeah. It's important that you have that conversation, have a look and see what they, what, how they move, have a talk about their injury history, mm -hmm. and then you can lay out uh, a protocol for them. They can have a series of exercises that they get started on. But can they do these exercises at home? Let's say, you know, they haven't got time to join the gym or they don't want to go to a gym. Yeah. Can you get a goal for feeling better and moving better from their living room? Yeah, hundred percent. Especially if they're not. A lot of people they contact me. They don't do any exercise and yeah. they're in, they're in agony and they're in pain and they want to play golf pain-free, injury-free, go out and have a good time. But, if, if, but again, some people don't want to go to the gym for three one-hour sessions a week, whatever. Yeah. Some people love doing that. Some yeah, people sure. go too much. Yeah. Uh, there's some PGA Tour players that do too much in the yeah, gym. Okay. You can see it in their yeah. golf swing. Uh, but like, even if you were doing four or five exercises four times a week, that can make a huge difference to somebody's golf game. But specifically game. targeted for that individual. Exactly, yeah, yeah. because so, some, for example, somebody could have a really loose rib cage and really loose, like loads of mobility, mm -hmm. and they're, they're not doing any stability. So mm -hmm. they, they actually need to get a bit of strength into their body to provide a bit of compression on their mm -hmm. body. They've got, they've got loads of expansion. So they actually probably need to do a bit of strength work. Yeah. Whereas some people can't move at all. They're so compressed. They could be sitting at a desk all day. They can't move at all. They probably need to do a bit more mm. mobility and flexibility. Mm. So everyone's different. So you're either going to be a little bit too compressed or you're going to be too expanded. Or if you're a perfect fit, then you're probably okay to start yeah. doing a little bit more strength and power stuff. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. So we'll put some details in the um, description below. In yeah, I'm, get I'm, in touch with you. It'd be great if you, know, I'm if happy you can't to, help people. It's brilliant. I'm happy to help anybody that, that wants to get better. That's kind of my motto. Yeah, cool. Right, let's see a few more so I can help you a bit more with this shot. Yeah, it's nice. Good. Right. Okay. Good stuff. Right, should we do some pitch shots as well? Sure. 40, 50 yarders, yeah? Right, we're going to get some set back right pin. Uh, obviously got that branch at the top there to negotiate. How has your pitching been since we had a look last year? Yeah, no, my wedge play has really come on a lot. Again, it's a lot softer. This is obviously quite rough here. So it'd be hard to control what the flight. What have you got here? It's a 54. 54, okay. So we're looking for a, sort of a, a low launching, but a fairly high spinning pitch here. Yeah, nice shot. And really, it's the same sort of thing. A lot of the tenses you, you struggle with right at the beginning when we were talking about how it was coming in here. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing in your pitching. You've got to feel the right side working. You've got to feel like the club head's staying a little more in front of you. Yeah, and that's superb. That, was, that plane there was absolutely superb. Look at the reaction on the ball. That's off a, off a muddy kind of down slope. It's fantastic. Did you feel that club in front more? Yeah. Now you came slightly out of that one, do you feel it? Yeah. So that's that's going back to when you do that, that move, okay. 
So you need to feel your right pocket, your right shoulder turning onto the ball. Your good one is when you turn onto the ball, the bad one is when you go under and drop back. Stayed in it beautifully. You feel your right side you close the door there, yeah? Yeah. And is there anything like that I should be really doing then to obviously counteract my tendency of getting inside? What with pitching? Yeah. Uh well de I definitely flare your left foot and really again just feel that pressure point through there. I think I'm a big believer if you can get the pressure there, it's unlikely you're gonna drop back. Okay. Right? Um but yeah, go to the top of the swing. There's a drill wise, so put your right hand down here. Yeah. Okay, and then from there, I feel like you're gonna work onto the ball. Yeah, that's the feeling. Just gets your feeling of turning onto it that way. Yeah. And you should feel like that, you just, and you don't get that drifted to the right. Yeah. You know, when you turn onto it. Not committed there, yeah. A bit more chest speed for it. In between speed. two shots there. Yeah. yeah, great shot. Really good. Very, very good. That right side is delivering on top of the ball now. Yeah, that's good. So you set up there. So your right side's working better. Yeah, you got a little bit more cup in here, look. Yeah. So you're not getting it wrapped in and shut here, right? It's good. And then from there, this would be the bad one. Yeah. Okay. From here now, you're working onto it this way. And then you're finishing more to the left. Okay. Like you're exiting more this way. Fantastic. Yeah, good. I think that feeling of your finish, like knowing where you need to be here with the hands far away from your left ear as you can, that's a good one for you coming down because you can't achieve that if you're doing that. You're always going to have a very high, yeah. high sort of uh, high release. Again, it's similar to the full swing, same issues. Yeah. Yeah, I see that a lot. It just filters all the way through. Strong legs, plus the pressure for your flared left foot. I like your backswing now. I'm gonna turn onto it, finish left. So that was a little heavy, but because you still moved well. Yeah. Right, it's fine. It's a good test these as well. Downhill, downhill muddy lies. The ultimate test of ball striking. Nice of you to set that up for me, Dan. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you like a challenge, right? Yeah, good. All right, see if you can play that front pin. Um, and we're going to play a flighted one. There's just enough gap through the trees there to almost see if we can sort of bring it in off the left a little bit here. Same club or? I go up a little, you got the 60 there. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you've got that gap in the tree, you can just bring it off there, yeah? To that pin. Okay. So you're going to feel a little bit more of a fade bias now, yeah? That was nice. Yeah, nice shot. Very good. I'm not a huge fan of uh, using the 60 to pitch with. 
but certain situations like this, downslope, tight lie, tight pin, it's your only option really. How about you? Do you like using 60 much? Would you use it much? I prefer, to, I prefer to 54. Yeah. You just, it's, like, it's always windy in Ireland, so I like to see it going it's in. flat, yeah. You just keep moving a bit more, yeah? Keep moving through it. Moving left. Ugh. Yeah. Nice speed. Just more chance of doing that with the 60, isn't there? Yeah, totally. I mean, the other way of doing this, right, would you ever look at maybe using something like, I've got a 56 here, so I've got the wrong club, but use, using something maybe 50, 52-ish and hooking it into the slope. I don't know how soft it is there. It might just totally stop, but playing something more that way, but landing it three yards further back. Yeah, and no, I think the right shot is the shot I was playing. I just wasn't executing it. But 54. Which is obviously a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think there is a lot of bounce on that 14 it's or something. Not, it's not matching that down slope well, no. is it? I brought the wrong wedge. If you're moving so much better through the ball there. Huh? Yeah. Right, yeah, that's right cool. the right wedge, the right tool. Yeah, so so you 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 mix the wedges up when you're playing tournaments? Will you will you have a good look at conditions and Yeah, I of course plays. I have a, I've a couple of couple of lob wedges. I generally don't use that that much, but just the conditions it seems to be a little bit better. Um the moment mm. for the for the turf but yeah I think this could be its last day. Yeah it's fantastic. That finish is better isn't it? Yes it is yeah. You'll see on camera how much that's much more this way. Yeah good. Much more around around the stomach. Okay. Right, Robbie, great session. We ran through all the shots. Um, nice MOT, really. You can go away and work on that. Does that all make sense to you? Yeah. Um, because I haven't been playing that much, it's nice now I'm coming into a block of practice. I, I, I can actually work on this rather than coming over here, here and without a plan. Now I know going home, I've got stuff to work on yeah. and I can work on some good habits rather than ingraining yeah, all totally, bad habits. Yeah, so all good that, check up. Fine. Good, right. We're going to finish with a little competition. So it's going to be me for you, and very simply, whoever gets it closest to the hole gets a point. It's going to be first to three wins. Whoever gets nearest to the hole chooses the next shot. Okay, do I get like a couple of shots? <laughs> no. no, you're going to give me shots. Right, so um, first shot is a little tricky one down the hill there. So I'm going to go first, see what I can do. Got to sit, got to sit. It's that foot, right. Plenty of room there. <laughs> I think it's 56 degrees there, little release one. Plenty of room there. I wouldn't like to be buying some land off you. <laughs> oh, he's played it, he's played it. I'll tell you what. Oh, that needs a little measure. I think I get that one. <laughs> yes, a measure. No. Oh, I've got you. Okay. Yeah. A couple of inches. Bad start. Right, one nil. Right, next one. We're going to play one out of the rough. We'll go here to... We'll do that one that sort of sits up a bit. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do, we'll do the one... The far pin. Okay. So we've got this little tricky slope to contend with. Hopefully we won't pitch on that camera. I'm going to go over the top of it. Hmm. 
Mm, two feet. Pushed it a bit. Right. Let's see it. Oh, bad bounce the other way, didn't it? All right, put it right, clipped off the top of the draw, but 2 0 up against it, Robbie. Well, I think I was <laughs> right, I'll let you choose the next shot then, all right? I know, we'll stick to the rules. All right, okay. I don't want Danny's sympathy. It could be the greatest comeback. Yeah, okay, I get it. Right, we're going to do it from the down slope. Okay, sandy, tufty grass, quite severe down slope. We're going to go to the back pin, so this is an awkward one. Oh, it's got to sit. It's got to sit. It doesn't Riddles have to sit on. that much. Well, it's about four feet. <sighs> oh, he's got one back here. Yeah, well done. Right, 2-1, your choice. Where are you taking me? Hmm. Go up here. Which pin are we going to? I'll stick with my 54. This is a shot I like here, I need to get Back in the game here. Okay, he's picked a favourite. It's not broken. it out a little bit. Ooh, what's that? Three feet. The door right. is this to win. Firmly open. This is the moment of glory. I think I've just got you there, Robbie. Look at he's having a good look. <laughs> yeah, well done. I think I've got you. Listen, well done. I'm home sure. Adv home, advan home advantage. We'll have a rematch. Uh, bring it to we'll have a rematch at Royal Dublin, right? Yeah. Listen, great work today. Great, cheers. Thanks for coming on and um, your best luck of everything. Thank you. Enjoy your practice, all right?